Welcome back. So continuing our progress on getting things bonded together with the fuselage. Uh, you see Jeff here is in the process of laying down uh, or installing these uh, conduits to have everything run through the keel. So that's uh, just starting to move along. And uh, the guy's got this one primed. This is the uh, upper uh, skin for the foreplane on the right hand side. So primed and then guide coated. And that's uh, in the process of getting the next round of sanding happening there. Um, Zach and uh, Devon have been working on that. So this is one of the blocks that holds the nose gear into place and uh, we decided or well, we needed to take off about 70 thou off of that so I put that on the machine to get that done and the reason was is because the uh, layup on the keel ended up being a little bit thicker than what we'd expected uh, so we needed a little bit more room and this was the best place to take it off. So here you can see the two blocks now are mounted there holding the nose gear into place and this is kind of how the nose gear operates. So Obviously the keel's upside down right now, and so the gear retracts, uh, the nose gear retracts forward and up. So that's kind of how it'll live there. So uh, it's nice to see that fitted there. And uh, Zach and Devin have been making more progress again on these plugs, so a little bit further along with sanding on this uh, right side one um, after it got primed. And then Devin's been working on getting this one close to uh, being ready for priming so it won't be too long and uh, we'll be able to have them uh, lay up the molds for those. And there you can see there's six conduits there now and ultimately these are going to be bonded into place they're just laying there right now and, and there's going to be two more added for the rudder cable so we'll actually have uh, extra room if we need to run anything else down there later on. So one of the parts we haven't done yet is the lower cowling uh, for the engine compartment and we've been sort of putting this off because we've been discussing different changes or whatever so anyway we've come to a conclusion that the best thing to do is to split it into two and have this first part here which basically encompasses the baggage area actually make that a part and then bond it onto the existing end of the fuselage and and bond in the firewall and and everything around the baggage compartment which will make um, that whole a-frame structure and everything like that around the firewall much stronger so here you can see I've kind of like picked out all the various pieces that are going to make up this part and uh, getting ready to sort of flange it so we can actually mill the plug for that and then ultimately the, the lower cowling will just be the last bit that goes from that sort of opening that you see there um, to the very end of the um, aircraft there where the spinner is for the prop and that'll be uh, vented with some louvers to allow uh, the cooling air um, to escape out the back of the uh, fuselage there. So anyway, this one um, is next going to be next up on the machine. So the next thing I had to do was create the flanges and such for it. So this is kind of what it ended up looking like. A um, bit sort of weird really, but um, there are recesses in there for the flanges and also for the baggage doors. Uh, so it's not just one big flat thing. You know, the, the recesses are a hundred thou deeper than the main part. Um, so anyway, that, that one's uh, going up on the machine there shortly and um, we want to get this one laid up quickly because the rest of the fuselage kind of re relies on it. I mean, we have to have it before we can um, bond the firewall into place and the A-frame and all that stuff and um, then, then we can um, bake the whole fuselage or post-cure it. And that post-cure will be something that happens uh, after we get uh, the fuselage up on the landing gear and uh, after we have the open house, uh, which hasn't been announced yet, again, four weeks after you see it up on the gear. So here is the machine there, and I'm starting to mill that block. So that's moving along. And here you can see the guy's got that uh, left-hand side upper uh, four-plane plug there primed. So um, time for be sanding on that one. And Zach's been pretty much working nicely on this one and just got the leading edge pretty much left to do before they can get the second round of primer. Okay, something else we hadn't quite sort of finished figuring out yet was um, placement and uh, clearance for the parachute. So I just um, worked on that yesterday and got that sorted out. So here's our parachute box that you've seen before in a previous video. And there's kind of like a mock-up of the rocket. And you can see now I've actually um, done a couple of changes here to where the firewall is to allow that um, room to come out there, both the rocket and then the parachute. So, and you see the overhead view, it's nice and clear there, so the rocket will be able to come out straight. And there's just gonna be a, a flat panel on the, or a panel, a breakaway panel on the top of the fuselage there. So when the rocket blows out, it'll just blow that panel away, and then it'll be able to pull the chute out cleanly. Um, 
So what I had to do here was basically uh, make this extra little um, add-on here that's going to replace the top corner of the existing firewall that we've already laid up. And so that's what this guy looks like. So it's nothing really complicated. We'll probably just make a quick little plug for that and pull a mold or maybe we'll just make a, a little drape thing that we can just pull the part off directly. And uh, then what we need to do for the existing firewall that you've seen in a previous video a long time back that's already been laid up, um, that'll just get the top corner um, sort of cut off of it there and then that other piece that I just showed you will get bonded to the top of that. And then all it does is just change the angle so instead of lean back it's just coming directly vertical and just allows room um, for the shoot or for the rocket and the shoot to deploy. Um, so it was nice to be able to get that all fit in there because uh, you know the shoot was slightly larger than the um, than the BRS ones when we went to the Galaxy one. So the other thing I had to do was one of these brackets here that supports the firewall and the engine. Um, that was actually a little bit shorter um, on that edge that's sort of closest to the camera here. So it was impinging on the um, parachute box. So I had to sort of uh, basically stretch it out a little bit to allow room for the parachute box. So unfortunately we've already laid both of these up, the parts and the molds, um, but we're going to have to redo that one uh, to allow room in there um, so the chute can sort of fit between it. But uh, anyway, it all fits nicely, so that's good. Uh, so anyway, back to the avionics. And even though the stuff I just showed you has been keeping me pretty busy for the last few days, I did have some time to get some more progress on this, so let's just go through that. So I've got um, two different knobs that I've put in here now, and so the first one on the left there is going to be for engaging the parking brake and the one on the right there is going to be for the um, the manual gear dump operation um, for you know if for some reason you don't have a gear uh, um, dropping down you'll be able to pull that and it'll allow the gear to uh, extend by itself so underneath there's the parking brake uh, valve there and there's basically a rod that sort of hooks to that and there's the one for the gear dump and that hasn't been actually plumbed up yet the, the tubing for that hasn't been set but the one for the parking brake has and you can see there's the there's the lines for the parking brake and they basically just run up through the pressure wall um, out to the front of the aircraft and I'll show you that in a little bit where that goes and then here's the um, I didn't show you this before the underside of the prop pitch controller there and that's the wiring for that's all been um, laid out so that one's uh, basically all sorted which is nice and what else we got here so there's the um, gear switch there that one there's the gear switch and so the wiring's been defined for that and then above that's the key and yeah somebody said you need to move that and I still haven't found a great spot for the key switch but anyway all this stuff is kind of you know most most things are kind of defined but some things will still move later on as, as I find a better place for them and there you can see the actuator rods for the parking brake that's the one highlighted in blue there and the parking brake will just be operated by just standing on the brakes and then just pulling the knob out there to um, lock the system with the pressure that you've applied um, you know using your feet so uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to work and that's pretty common uh, with how most of them are done uh, in these aircraft so let's see uh, moving around uh, into the nose compartment there I've done quite a bit more things here got things sort of plumbed into place for various different things. Um, let's see, oh yeah, let me show you something else here uh, quickly. So I've got a circuit breaker in here, which is the one that's gonna control the gear because um, the vertical power doesn't have a, a, a 70 amp circuit is what we need. And then th that's gonna be a switch there. Um, that one's gonna control um, the pressurization system. So if you ever have to dump the cabin, you'll you'll actually have a lever switch there. And I just put a circuit breaker in there to hold that. but. I'll explain that more later on in a future video. So here's the uh, cable connections there that go to the main circuit breaker that I just showed you in the console and then those run down and provide power to this uh, contactor that, that um, is the one that sends the power to the, um, the hydraulic pump for the gear. And you see I've got all the wires sorted out for that. And then you've got these two different manifolds that I mentioned last time. So those have all been plumbed now. Um, with the various different uh, hydraulic lines going to the nose gear and I'll, you'll see that in a second and also down to the main gear um, so it's good to have all that defined and you see I've brought the cylinders in to this particular model here so this is the cylinder for the nose gear and I've got the two different lines there so one line when it gets pressurized extends that rod and, um, 
and that drops the gear down and the other one when it gets pressurized pulls it back and then that um, retracts the gear I think that's the way it works but anyway um, I've got it um, defined correctly in the model so I don't have to remember it all the time <laughs> which is a great reason for having SOLIDWORKS you just don't have to remember everything uh, so anyway all the different uh, hydraulic lines there are running down one of the conduits um, so those those are the two for the gear uh, running down there so there's one that again for gear up and the other one for gear down and uh, here's that manifold that I put in last time so you see I've connected that and um, so the one on the bottom there is for the gear uh, up and the one on the top is for gear down and each of those uh, now has a left and right um, plumbed out of that that runs to um, the cylinders for the main gear as you can see here and so um, it's not actually shown here but we have these cylinders for attracting and extending the gear but we also have some pneumatic struts that by default are constantly trying to push the gear down so when you uh, operate that dump valve that I said before what will end up happening it will just equalize the pressure on both sides and allow the pneumatic struts to push the gear down and it will automatically lock into place with the over center mechanism so it's a nice fail safe uh, operation that you don't have to worry if uh, for some reason you lose your hydraulic uh, power okay so onto the brakes and we actually have uh, gun drilled legs here um, that have a brake line sort of um, drilled inside of them before they were bent so you see we just hook up the hydraulic line to the leg itself um, using a fitting and then down the bottom here at the end of the leg there there's the opening there so they'll have another screw in fitting there um, and then with a, just a flex cable that runs to the brake caliper itself so that's kind of nice and neat you don't have to worry about your cables breaking um, on the legs there or whatever and these will be flex lines here that run all the way back down uh, through one of the conduits um, all the way back down and as you can see here out the conduit and up through the pressure bulkhead in the front and over to the um, parking brake um, valve that I showed you before so basically run through there and down to the par parking brake and then from the parking brake they actually run to the um, the rudders rudder pedals with the things and that what I just highlighted there that's the brake um, um, reservoir there for the fluid so anyway those lines run there and then back to the parking brake cylinder and then off to the actual brake cylinders on each of the brake pedals um, for pilot and co-pilot and I haven't quite plumbed those in there that's be coming out of that opening there and there's one on the other side um, for left and right brakes so that's uh, still something that needs to be done and that'll be probably fairly next to get done so I finish off the brakes and the hydraulic definition which is good and there's that uh, cabin dump valve again and that just has to be plumbed up um, to the forward um, bulkhead pass, pass through there um, up the top there and uh, yeah, into yeah, there's these two openings there is for the dump valve um, hasn't been plumbed on this side but it's been plumbed on the other side and likewise the power there or the connections to that circuit breaker hasn't been plumbed yet either but anyway so those are done and uh, let's see what else we have there um, the solenoids all wired up there and defined and uh, what else we got here uh, I'm just trying to remember what else that I did that I can show you but uh, anyway most of the gear stuff is coming along and pretty much defined and same with the brakes and then I'll be able to get on and start finishing off um, the rest of the avionics stuff because there's still a bunch of wiring that has to happen oh let me show you this too so this is what I talked about last time there's your three uh, LEDs for your gear so they're right in your face uh, so when you're coming into land and you're looking above the glare shield and you're glancing down at instruments you're going to see your three green lights there or you're going to see something else and hopefully you'll notice them and and realize that oh maybe my gear isn't down <laughs> and you'll solve the problem before you try and land um, on the belly of the aircraft uh, so anyway more to do still but making really good progress on all this um, I'm not sure if there'll be a video on Tuesday or Wednesday because Labor Day weekend uh, this weekend but uh, anyway, thanks again for watching and uh, until next time, uh, have a good weekend.